So let's talk about making the decision to leave Leighton Orient. Such must have been a tough decision for you, whether whether or not you, you feel you need to further your career. Having been somewhere for that long and having that familiarity and that bond with the supporters and the team must have been a, a hard decision for you to pack up your things and go. It was, but as I just said, we uh, I, I had it in my mind that I just needed to spread my wings. Uh, it was my career. I did know it needs. I, I, uh, I was engaged uh, at the time. Just got myself, a, you know, sort of a flat with a mortgage. Uh, and it's more financial than than anything else, or did that play a little bit of a part of it? I yeah. think it was everything. I wanted to, you know, sort of spread my wings generally. Uh, I wasn't encouraged at home because my dad, bless him, was uh, he loved the fact that you know I was playing for what in effect is a local club. Um, so that meant a lot to him and to the family and stuff. You were you were playing the tried for the club that they all supported. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously we. we Barking size, you know, sort of Ilford, it's, you know, sort of bang straight in West Ham, uh, Leighton Orient country, you know, and, and, and like, you know, sort of loads of, you know, sort of uh, supporters and my my sort of like shout at Leighton Orient was there's only one Barking Cider. So it was all, you know, it was all very local, very, very good. And, you know, and, and, and it was a wrench um, and I did want to move, but boy, when I said I was going to move, I didn't realise how far I was going to move. But uh, that was... Uh... Plymouth Argyle boss Peter Shilton was looking for a midfield sort of enforcer general who could play a little bit. You seem to tick all the boxes. How did that conversation, how did that move transpire? Well, I was out of contract. Uh, so I had made my mind up that I was going to leave. Um, I had a couple. I had Reading. Um... I believe I had Charlton. I can't do it because I'm, you know, going through it. So I don't know if that completely confirmed. Charlton supporters might correct me on that one. <laughs> uh, but one of my best pals in football, Kevin Nugent, had gone down uh, on deadline day uh, the, the the season before. Um, he obviously got asked about me. Uh, Peter Shilton came and watched. Uh, he'd made the decision and bottom line he was or Plymouth were the only ones to willing to take it to a tribunal uh, Leighton Orient wanted, wanted a lot more money than what uh, Plymouth were willing to because uh, you've been spend. out of contract as well so it'll go to a tribunal and being out of contract it has to go to a tribunal and, and more often than not it's a business isn't it even now uh, sorry even then you know, so so much more uh, now, but uh, you know, obviously Plymouth, they were going to get as cheap as they can, uh, and Leighton Orient wanted as much as they can. It, it, it ended up at one hundred ninety-five thousand, but the money uh, and the signing on fees from from Plymouth was was unheard of uh, in in the amount it was, uh, and not only were they signing myself, they signed six, maybe seven lads. All in one go, so he all was good players. He was yeah, and he was he was creating a team down there. And as I say, Kevin Nugent was down there. There was other lads. One lad from Barnet called Gary Paul. Uh, there was uh, their record signing Paul Dalton, who come from Hartlepool, but he originated from Man United. Um, Keith Hill from Blackburn, Craig Skinner from Blackburn. So there was quite a few uh, new faces going down there. We all got put into a hotel uh, on the the the, the, the hoe, which was lovely, um, but uh, it was a million miles away from everything, and um, yeah, it had a few consequences. Uh, I was I was with uh, a girl who was you know obviously uh, was I was engaged to at the time, and that didn't quite work out. She had family commitments, which I respected. And uh, so I, I really went down there on my own uh, as a as a single lad and joined up with Gary Paul and Kevin Nugent and uh, Craig Skinner, who were all single lads. And um, we were in the hotel for three months and we had a ball. You can imagine single lads all living together in a hotel, in a new town, a new environment. Oh, must have been like the cat amongst the pigeons. It it was, and 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 that's where I've been blessed. And you know, they're they're all f- were fantastic lads. We don't 
keep in contact as much as we should and you know the, the, but it was it was just like a little family down there you know the, you know Keith Hill had his wife and and the kids uh Kevin Nugent at the time had a, had a girlfriend around there but it, it it wasn't so much that it was that we were all away from home you know uh, anyone that knows that journey down there it is a long journey and so you can't just pop up, pop back to London and, and, and pop back. There was a lad called Dwight Marshall. He was down there uh, as well. And sort of he was probably looking at coming back. He'd had two or three years down there. Uh, but we all joined up. Um, we we all built a house together. There was five of us that bought a house, nice house. So we all shared the, shared the rent money. And as I say, it was brilliant. Uh, we'd, we'd not swap. Uh, all those uh, months that I was down there, um, I don't think there's too many stories I can tell you on uh, on this podcast that would be uh, that would be airable. But uh, tell us something. Give us one. Uh, oh, well, oh, you've you've got me. Work, you've got me on that one. Um, no, it, it was a it, it was a terrific time. There was some antics going on uh, that you can imagine. Uh, as I say, we had this five-bedroom house on the on the edge, uh, edges of uh, of Plymouth, and uh, dare I say, I think we thought we were the superstars, and we'd arrived a little bit, probably a bit too cocky for the for the locals. There was a few lads there that sort of probably took exception, exception. Uh, and I could probably understand that because I'd had that for many years at Leighton Orient, lads coming in, yeah, on new bigger players money, coming in, etc. Uh, but everyone settled down. I think the year, the first year, it took a, a little while. Uh, there was lads like Warren Joyce uh, who had come from Preston. He couldn't settle down, uh, and really, yeah, and just decided to couldn't get with a life there. Couldn't get with a life. He was a he, he had just got with a girl, and obviously that was, and she didn't move down. So they're type of things that probably people don't particularly realise what's going on. Um, you know the 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 the, the wise and the wherefores of of, uh, of 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 moving a transfer. It's all well and good, you know. You 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 agreeing to signing on fees. You're agreeing to the the, the move, but the actual day to day living and the and the transition doesn't isn't always as smooth as what it was. We made it as smooth as we possibly could, um, but I think it took the whole group. Uh, best part of a year to settle down before we became a an exceptional team. Now everyone knows about Peter Shorten for his goalkeeping ability. What was he like as a coach, as a manager, as a man manager to work with? Uh, I think Peter was a tremendous goalkeeper. Uh, I think his uh, his man to man management skills probably were his weakest point. Um, he had a uh, a way of of playing, a way of training that was pretty unique, in as much that it was short, sharp, uh, a lot of finishing, uh, few five side games, but he wanted everything done and dusted within an hour, an hour and a half. Now. Yet again, I'm putting my coach's head on and I'm putting my manager's head on. And when you've got lads that are all come from all over the country and their next thing after they finish training is to keep himself occupied, I know what I would be doing. And I know what I would probably what, more be doing. Training? Oh, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be <laughs> making sure that the training started at 11, 30, 12 o'clock. I would make sure that they ate. Afterwards, maybe have a nap in between and an afternoon make, session. I maybe would make, I would make sure you, you'd, you'd have to fill the lives for 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 us, and he he didn't. And I think it kicked him uh, up the backside in that third year that we got relegated. I think lads were really good footballers, but uh, you know we we had a year of transition, as I said, that second year. That second year, do you think it came together quite well for you? That boys? second year is the best team that I've played in in my football career. Really, and I would, I would, I would even include up in Birmingham. They oh. were an amazing group of uh, players. As I say, there was a lad called Paul Dalton who uh, who was very, very homesick, um, and you know he had to get back to Middlesbrough. 
and he got back to Middlesbrough a little bit too more than uh, than probably Mr. Shilton realised. Yeah. Well, what a footballer! What Must a footballer. have been some drive from Plymouth to Middlesbrough. Yeah, lad. well, believe it or not, he's the only one I've ever known to commute, uh, and he used to do it every so often. But he'd be home every weekend. Um, but yeah, no, it was we we had a good group. We had a young lad in goal called Alan Nichols, who, who unfortunately isn't with us anymore. Uh, but he was in England under twenty ones while well, we were. Uh, in on that run, we we scored nearly ninety goals that season. Very very free flowing. Uh, if you ask any of the, 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 the Plymouth supporters over the years, they they will say arguably that was one of the best teams, or one of the most entertaining teams that uh, that's ever graced Home Park. I personally scored twenty three goals from um, midfield. From midfield, that's incredible. Uh, and obviously, yeah. You know, it was it was brilliant, and and you know the, the speculation started again, and uh, yeah, it was a it was a fantastic time down there. I love the club. Uh, you know, I, I do think that I'm you know sort of uh, uh, I, I'm, I feel that I, I did myself justice down there, and uh, and left in you know high esteem down there. Um, my wife's from Plymouth. I met her in the third in, in my third year down there. And obviously, so we still get a few bits and pieces, stories and tales. Um, but I, I, I look back on that time with, with, with very fond memories. Interesting. Interesting indeed. You mentioned the speculation and, and that starting to mount again because obviously you, 23 goals in one season, putting in some top top end performances. How did you handle that pressure? Did, did, that, did that inspire you to play better or did you feel a weight on your shoulders from everyone sort of watching you? Strange you should say that. I, I scored 19 goals up to Christmas and I was flying. And the it does come on to personal relationships. I, uh, I I did sort of get back with the uh, with, with my uh, with my girl that I was engaged to, and then we finally split up completely, and that done me head in a little bit um, round about Christmas. And I really went through quite a quite a low moment down there and that reflected on my performances but I ended up with 23 goals yes there was you know there was speculation we lost out uh on the uh, in the in the, in the playoffs uh in the first round we ended up uh just missing automatic promotion uh on goal difference we went into the playoffs we played Burnley who we ended up 12 points clear of uh, in the league, uh, we went up to them in the first round of the semi-finals, uh, nil-nil. Uh, came back one-nil up, ended up losing the game three-one. So from those highs, unfortunately, that was one massive low, and um, it was my second year down in in Plymouth. Uh, it made a lot of us quite unstable, if I'm truthful. Um, we just didn't get going the year after. And from those heights of having probably the best team that we've had down in Plymouth, I was injured for uh, a period of time. Paul Dalton was injured for a period of time. And when I say a period of time, up to Christmas. And Steve McCall, who was probably our, our linchpin in, in that team, uh, he was also injured. And uh, we never got going and, and unfortunately got relegated. I mean, I didn't play much of that uh, season myself, but it probably just did reinforce the fact that I may, I needed another move. Um, and probably, yeah, you know, it sounds like I'm money grabbing, but, you know, it was sort of like, right, OK, uh, I'm, I'm hitting 27, 28. Um, Gary Paul, who was down at Plymouth with me, um, had said that Birmingham were interested Massive club. How can I not be interested in that? Were they in a higher league at the they time were, as well? They were getting promoted out of our league, which was League One, into the championship. Um, and so it was, uh, yeah, and I knew for a fact that they were interested. Um, so that would mean a higher status, a higher, maybe a higher wage, a higher uh, living sort of expenses and more sort of more opportunity to showcase yourself at a higher level. Yeah. And, and to be fair, I mean, I, you know, and that's really, I don't think why I, I really got any sort of grief from 
Plymouth, who got relegated because obviously they've gone relegated now. They were back into League Two. Would you say that was one of the lowest points for your career? I know you didn't play that much that season, but to see the team relegated and to yeah. be around it, yeah, to to have such to to have such a fantastic season the year before, to fall apart, for the manager to get the sack. We had three managers that year. Uh, the club were in a mess, and it was really, really unfortunate. Um, because I think an awful lot of us uh, look look on our time at Plymouth with with fond memories. The support is amazing. Anyone that doesn't or hasn't been down there won't actually know it. You've got uh, we were getting uh, at our best over a Christmas period. We were getting between fifteen and eighteen thousand home games at League One. Really? Yeah. Yeah, no insane. one knows it. You've got two, you've got two <laughs> counties. Insane. You've got two counties down there. You've got Cornwall and Devon. And no disrespect to Exeter and Torquay, they're not a patch on what Plymouth can be or could be. And so I think Plymouth's still a sleeping giant, even to now, even to this day. It is, but but where it where it is, you're always going to have the issue of lads going down there that they only go down there for a period of time. Um, because of its sort of yeah, proximity and, uh, and location. The proximity. You know, I mean, I think um, Paul Sturrock had a very successful time down there only a, a, a few years ago. Uh, they did have an airport, which they don't anymore, down in Plymouth. Uh, and he flew the lads everywhere. And I think that's a big thing. You know, you, you, you're, not spun, you, you're not spending, you know, all your time on a coach. I mean, I, uh, uh, we had a horrendous one in our first year. We played Blackpool on the Saturday, which was best part of six and a half hours one way. We came back. We didn't do overnight because the chairman had decided that he Too wanted expensive. to pull the plug on, on the expenditure. And so we went up to Hartlepool on the Monday night, which was best part of eight hours. Jesus. Uh, we drew the game at Blackpool on Saturday and we lost because everyone uh, done a 12 hour round trip had, on the had, coach had so much fatigue hours. it was unbelievable so what was the coach trips like in that era obviously card schools we hear about and sort of pranks and stuff can anything you can tell us like yeah no I mean like, you know it's, it's you, you there's a there's a lot of stuff there that goes on a, a, a lot of gambling uh, a lot of money being passed. Uh, Are we talking from small other. money to big money all the way well, sort of you, on the you're radar? You're talking, you know, uh, what's re- uh, relative to a, a League One football club. You know, we're not talking like your Michael Owens and your uh, and your Teddy Sheridan <laughs> no, at, at no. England or anything like that. But, I mean, it was, you know... Um, so uh, the normal everyday man, though, it would be sort it, of excessive money. Yes. Like. And like you know, the longer you're on that bloody uh, 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 coach, the, the the more money you lose or win. So right, if you're uh, having a bad day and you've got a long journey on the coach, it, it's hitting you harder, right? I'm exactly. Thinking. And there's a game called short, shoot pontoon. I don't know whether you've played it. No, it's basic. It's basically gambling at its rawest. And but really um, fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, it, it literally got to the stage where you 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 played in the last hour because you couldn't play it there and then because you just you'd you'd be you'd be owing people your mortgage. So it was uh, no, it, it, if different things. I mean, not so much at, at, at Plymouth, but we just sort of you know used to have this competition that you couldn't get. Uh, you'd have to try and get around the whole coach uh, without going on the floor. And trying people trying to push you off and everything like that. So it's amazing the sort of things you do. Uh, we call it shark infested waters. So it's just stupid, stupid things that you do. What boys do. They did have two beds there, which everybody used to, to the fullest extent at, at Plymouth. But the journeys sort of it 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 depended, and they were they were they were a lot drink induced as well. Um, what on the way back after the way games back, and that on the way back quality. And uh, yeah, it was it was bonding of, uh, of of a good time because you know, as I say, we were all down there, mainly single lads, uh, getting back and then going going straight out. So uh, it was uh, it was good times, even though they were long journeys. With the alcohol and stuff, and you know what it's like, people once they've had a drink, they're bound to say something. If someone's had a bad game or not particularly 
shown the best of their abilities and everyone's having a drink on the bus. Well, these things sometimes escalate into debates, if you like, or maybe Ooh. even a little, yeah. a little yeah. physicality that's between been, players. That's been very politically correct, but debates. Uh, no, there was there, there was fights. There was you know there was aggravation. Uh, we the first two years were, were were very good. That last year that we were getting relegated, it was horrendous because people have lost their heads a little bit of it. Yeah, I didn't have an awful lot uh, to do with it because I was ill and, and and injured and whatever, and and didn't do that much travelling. But the atmosphere, obviously, getting beat, and we were getting beat heavily. And you know, we all we us footballers are probably all the same, aren't we? It's not our fault. Listen, our lads are the it's same. If our lads team lose, we've all got the knock all week. Let alone exactly it being as your job and, yeah. and it so, being sort um, of in it turmoil. Was, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't a it weren't a great time in that last year. And yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, views are expressed. I, I do remember. Uh, and I'll and I'll keep it quite general. I won't be saying any names. Cause I don't think it's fair. No, I tell the we, stories, but you don't have to mention exactly. Any names. But no, we had uh, we ended ended up having a Christmas do, and it was uh, a, a bad taste do. So like everyone turned up in wigs and uh, sheepskin coats and great big flares and everything like that. And uh, two of the lads had a fight, which was on CCTV. It's probably one of the funniest things you've seen. You've got wigs going flying around. You've got sheeps in coats being tossed around and people busting up and everything like that. Hence to say everyone was all okay afterwards, but it was the frustration of probably not being a successful team. Uh, I think it was probably where we had been so, so good and then it was just literally like the air had been pulled out of a, of a, of a balloon. We just completely wilted and combusted and, and, and uh yeah we we got our act together in the last month or so russell osman came in but it was too late and and and, and the and the club got relegated and and most of the team that Shilt, shilton brought in were, were 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 disbanded and and we went here there and everywhere next up for you birmingham city talk me through that transition move from 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 signing for Birmingham City and everything that that went around on that that moment. Yeah, uh, as I said, had a horrendous time in that third year. Uh, I'd got myself an illness. Uh, I um, I had a condition that I've still got called G- Gilbert syndrome. Um, it got thing that I had hepatitis. Uh, I can say categorically that it wasn't. And it took a while, a long, long while. I was always just being permanently tired. Uh, but I had a quite a good summer in regards to drinking and whatever. Uh, I came back and was flying, um, really enjoying my football, and then just got hit by this illness that it took a good, five, six months for us to work it out. It's a really serious thing as well. It's tax the liver. Yes. So it, it, it can sort of make you weaker, it can make you tired, give you a little bit of jaundice as well. Yep. So yep. how did you handle that as a, as a professional Well, player? I know there was an awful lot of stories that were out that, you know, I had women AIDS, I had hepatitis C. Well, these I were stories this, that were actually that. going around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'd heard about them and, you know, it was uh, it, very frustrating. I do remember doing Children in Need and I thought I was okay. And it, that on the Children in Need day, there was three of us that were injured, uh, ill, uh, Paul Dalton, myself uh, and Steve McCall. And I thought I was all right. I was getting okay. And um, I'd done all these schools. I think we'd done about 10 schools in the whole day, just signing autographs. And I, it wiped me out for a week. And that was in around, obviously, what is that? New November time, isn't it? Children in need, and um, yeah, it was a it was a low moment. I didn't really know what 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 was the uh, what was the matter. As I say, I think it was probably about February March. We got it concluded, got over it, and then going back onto the, the to, to to the move with with Birmingham. Everybody was disbanding. We were getting relegated. I think people were looking for a way out. Uh, I knew that 
Birmingham were interested. Um, I was keen. Championship club, big club, biggest club I've played for, uh, with an unbelievable support. And um, yeah, it, it actually happened in the summer, but it coincided with me doing my full badge up at Lillishaw. Uh, and Mick McCarthy was there um, and uh, he offered uh, to take me uh, at Millwall, where he was at the time. And um, also uh, Charlton definitely um, uh, had made a bid uh, as well. I don't, I don't know why, but I wasn't ready to come back to London. Uh, I really, I, you know, I, I wasn't comparing the three clubs, but I just thought that... Um, Birmingham was the best option. Um, it wasn't. <laughs> I hasten to add. Why do you say that? It wasn't because uh, we we had too many players up there. I got signed. Yet again, it went to a tribunal. I found out on that tribunal that Coventry had bid 800 grand for me in that year that I scored 23 goals and they turned it down. They had a really good team at that time they as did. well, Coventry, didn't they? They did. Um, and I, I left, I think it was about two, 205 I went up there for. That would be the tribunal fee? That would be the tribunal fee, I Which think. Plymouth still were, quite a lot for a yeah, tribunal fee, yeah, let's be honest. Plymouth wanted a hell of a lot more. Obviously, Birmingham were uh, offering to, to pay as least as possible, which they were. But they were signing players, and they were signing players, and they were signing players. And we, it was, um, we're talking like I, on a ridiculous amount of players. Yes. Yeah, I didn't yeah. actually sort of give the significance to it until I'd done pre-season um, and the the amount of lads, first-team players there, you could have you could have fielded three first-team uh, teams out of that. And uh, it was, we had pre-season. Uh, I'll be the first to say that my assets in, in a football club certainly won't be one of those where I'm involved and as an ind individual player. I will say that I'm a team player and I would say that probably I would grow on managers rather than being a, a, an instant hit. So you'd be if that makes sense. you would be consistently consistently a good level as a good team player and yeah. not really drop below I'm, that. I, I, you know, if someone said to me, right, you've got to go and beat three players and put that in the top bins or everything like that, we can, that, that won't that's you. not me. No, I'd bundle put things in at the far post. I'd be heading where people shouldn't edit the thing. Uh, and that's why my nose is spread over my face. But um, Looked at my nose when you said that. <laughs> like, but yeah, so like it, it, I, I got up there and, and Barry didn't fancy me. Barry Fry signed me, he didn't fancy me, and I wasn't actually starting. I was actually offered on loan uh, the first game of the season to Swansea City. So I, a bit low, new signing, 205 grand. Confidence must have been actually, on the floor. Yep, yeah. and I couldn't actually start. Um, and I think it was the, the way everything was going to go for, for me at Birmingham. Uh, you know, over my career, I've been really, really lucky. Uh, Leighton Orient, Plymouth, Peterborough, uh, all of those I've excelled and done well and really thought that I've done myself justice. At Birmingham, probably the biggest club out of all four, uh, it just didn't happen. Um, and and, I, and I'm really, because the, 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 the club... Fan uh, base. Oh, it, it's just to die for it really is I mean you know it was great that they got themselves in the Premier League you know obviously you know are they having a bad time at the moment probably you know in in for the status of the football club they could easily be a Premier League football club easily uh, they're just you sort know, of teetering on the brink at the minute aren't they they they're are sort of they are yeah and um, but yeah when we were up there Barry oh, I love Barry to pieces but he didn't love me and I didn't love him to start off with what what do you think the do you think he just he didn't rate you as a player or you didn't fit his style and system? What what do you think the it, the thing with it I, was? I, as I just say, I wasn't that 
instant. You know, you 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 yeah, look yeah. at um, who can who can we say Jack Grealish at this moment in time? You look at Jack Grealish and he's you know he's, he's all a standout singing. player in the team, yeah. isn't he? You can he's tell. all singing, he's yeah. all dancing. He, he gets on that ball, he'll beat someone, he'll yeah. get the crosses in, and uh, I couldn't be more the opposite as a as a as a player, if you like. Really, you know, I'd be the one giving him the ball. I'd probably be the one that would be getting on the end of his crosses. Um, yes, I'd get the adulation for maybe scoring the goal, but would I be setting them up more often than not? No. No, but you would be playing the pass before the assist. Yeah. So you're winning winning yeah. the ball back, playing it to your man yeah. who's then so doing really, the creative it, bit. It, not that I was a sort of... Uh, not, I, I would say that as a, as a manager, I, I, I would... I'd have to... I'd have to grow on me. Uh, sorry, they... I would have to grow on them, beg your pardon. Um, and so Barry, as I say, I worked, ended up working for five years with him and we spoke it through. And he... That must have been interesting. Yeah. But it, Barry's a great lad. And he's, if there's if there's one thing that Was I he would, honest with you? Very honest. Yeah. Can see and he just didn't him. see it. He didn't see it. And he, get, he had other players. There was a lad there who was in my position and he's a mate of mine. Uh, Jonathan Hunt, who'd come from... Uh, come I remember from, Jonathan Hunt. You Great remember player. John? Yeah. Remember oh, John. all the skill in the world. Uh, left foot, right foot. I mean, I had him uh, as a player uh, when I managed St. Albans. I mean, the, no doubt in. And if you had to just put me and him as a, as, as a talent... It, we're not even in the same stratosphere. Polar opposites in terms of the way you play. But and to win in England, to win at Championship, League One, League Two, you just need a few of me around uh, as well as your skillful players. Well, you can't put squares into round holes, can you? No. You have a square is a square, a circle is a circle, exactly. as someone once told and me. And so really, when, with, with Barry... Um, it, it was an ongoing thing. He put me in, he put me out. He he played me. I knew he wasn't a hundred percent. And then we had a we had a first team coach uh, coach called Lou Facillo, and they were having a real bad time. Birmingham. I wasn't in the team, and Lil pulled me, and he went. I spoke to Barry. He gets it. I went. Oh right, great. Brilliant. So obviously, Lil obviously really rated you. And yes. He's thinking you should really be yes. in and about the team. Lil, I'm that old that Lil, me and Lil used to play against each other. So like, <laughs> he, you know, when I first started, Lil was at uh, L- L- Luton Town. You know, great left foot. Yeah. Really good lad. And he did. He pulled me and he said, I've had a word with him and he gets it. And I, oh, right. Okay. I played at Wolves. I weren't great. Uh, but I got half promise, not through Barry, but through Lil, that You're there was going to be a, run, a degree a of run patience. Of the games to get you full And up. I was going to get, because I, I, you know, you, you're very, very, very true. That, that I, I never really questioned my ability or my confidence other than those two years that I was at, at Birmingham. At Birmingham, I was shot to pieces in confidence wise, and it struck you know, me as a player that needed more of an arm around him at times rather than yeah, sort of being bollock, yeah, being bollocked by a manager, you know. Yeah, you know, to a degree, I, I didn't mind, I didn't mind the bollocking, but you know, but I think it had to be justified, and and like you know, and, and as I say, it, it, you just had to know what I brought to the table. You know, if if you just wanted some, you know, sort of finesse and, you know, sort of some dinky little farty stuff and everything like that, that ain't me. But if you did want someone to just, just get yourself into the box and then go and head the thing away and whatever like that, that's my game. Um, so we, it, it, it went on, had that game at, uh, at, at Wolves. I think we lost 2-1. Um, as I say, I weren't great, but I did have this thing in my back of my mind. Right, I'm going to get a little go from now to the end of the season, and and Barry got the sack. No, so you finally managed to win Barry I over. I won him over. His coaching team have, have got you the trust yep. of Barry. And, Barry's got the and I got and, the tick and, and he got the sack, and it was right, okay, and it was literally back to square one. Yeah, as what happens when a new manager comes exactly. in, he's going to have his own ideas, his own players, his own targets. Yeah. And 
And then systems. that's a story in itself, in in, in as much that I brought uh, uh, they they brought Trevor Francis in. Wow. Uh, Trevor Francis, what a player! I mean, what was so good about Trevor Francis? Trevor Francis opinion? joined in with the training, and if you think that we had that uh, in that team, we had Steve Bruce, we had Mark Ward, we had Gary Ablett. He's showing them Barry up in training. Horn. He was, I've never seen anyone control the ball with, in an unorthodox way with as much uh, grace and finesse as him. Can it be a bit disappointing or disheartening when the gaffer is better than 85% of the first team? It, it's a strange one, actually. And, it, you know, I, I, I'm going to drop a name now, but, you know, sort of a friend of mine is, is cousins with Glenn Oddle. And that that story of of Glenn getting frustrated with England internationals, and then literally sort of you know throwing the ball away and just sort of putting the ball down and, and him just wazzing it in and doing that, it's true. And he had for frustration, and and Trevor was exactly the same, and he just didn't get you know missed opportunities because that, we were in the championship. Yeah, the championship is a very very good level. The man was arguably world class. They weren't on and, the level this man had played and, at, and, was and, it? And and so you 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 know and and probably just that thing. I've never had that skill, so I couldn't really com- comment on it. But when you're there and you're seeing people failing, um, and I mean this with all the all the best respect in the world, to a degree, me managing at non-league level, just with people's attitude. Sometimes I don't understand some of the things that they do. Um, their their inconsistencies. So if I don't, and I'm only looking at just a very very small step down to what I played, um, what can they think? Trevor what was he Trevor looking at? And Glenn, and you know, it's just sort of like, what are these lads doing, missing the target? And do you reckon two top players that managed now will speak to each other and go, bloody hell, what is going on? Because they, like you said, the, the levels that they've played at and been around and trained with. But then, you know, I, I certainly don't mean to be disrespectful to the two world-class players that we spoke about, but then that is management. That's right. That is management. You're never going to, you know, you, 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 unless you're going to be managing a world 11 every every week, you're never going to get everyone that's going to be able to do what you're doing. Very so true. So, you, you, you know, it, it, you, you're going to have different lads with different abilities. You're going to have that lads with different levels of confidence. You're going to have lads that are going through a, a bad time. You're going, uh, going through a lads. That's management all over. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we, we're going back and we're looking at, at, at that year. Uh, I, re- I really... I don't like to feel sorry for myself, but I really felt that I was unfortunate in that second year at Birmingham. I had a really good pre-season. Uh, I got my head together. I was going to impress Trevor Francis. Uh, I don't think I ever had a chance. Seriously. I thought I played really well. I got involved. It was a very similar story. Uh, th- there was a... Um, there was a coach, Frank Barlow, I think his name was. So and Trevor would have brought in his own coaching team. He brought team, his own coaches his own in. Staff. Nick Mills, the old uh, Stoke City, England, right back. Frank Barlow. Um, Frank really got me because I was old school by then. I was 30, I was 29. So I was an old school and I was, I was one of these that would talk my way through a game and help people and everything like that. But I weren't, as we've just said, the flicky farty, skillful well, lad. You weren't going to do a Rabona, beat no, four men and bang it in the top no, bin, was it? not at all. But no. I probably would be out of marshal in midfield and make sure that we didn't, you know, concede and do that. So, yet again, Trevor was in sort of Barry Fry's camp, if you like, really, when he was at Birmingham. And it was sort of like, right, what, what, what can he do? What can he do like that? And I think it was only the coaches yet again. And I got two or three opportunities at a really good game against Coventry City. And this is where you sort of like slide indoors effects, really. Um, I uh, played against Coventry. I had at least six opportunities. I think 
I think it was Steve Grizzlevich uh, that was in goal. Some goal he picked. He pulled off some worldies. I know Gary McAllister was the lad I was playing against, wow. and I had a worldie. Probably one of my best games ever. And Let's be honest. Had... Gary McAllister was an absolute baller, wasn't he? Brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. And I, um, I didn't score, and I do think that had I maybe scored, then maybe I'd have I'd have stayed in and, and kept something. Cut a long story short. Trevor, I don't think, was having me. Uh, he kept on replacing me, but I kept on getting back. That lasted for about three months. He signed one lad, Chris Holland, which was probably the, the ultimate for me. I was 29. I'd played first-team football all my life, and I just wanted to play football. And uh, I went in to see Trevor. He was brilliant. Other than he just said, yeah, you can go. Uh, he said, but there was no if, nonsense with him. He just told no, you, he cut it down and told yeah, you exactly what yeah. it was. He just said, you know, he said, if you want to fight for your place, great. Uh, if you want to go, I understand you're at the age that you want to play first team football, but if you do want to go, you're not in my first team plans. So I had six months of not knowing what I was going to do. Is it quite, playing in is the it quite a disc- 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 disconcerning place to be in then mentally when you're not? It, For one, you're not feeling wanted. Secondly, you've not got that that drive, if you like, to go into work and ping balls about and buzz about, if you like. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you warts and all because I also lost my licence being a silly boy drink driving. And so not only was I living down because we decided that we weren't living up in Birmingham, I was living in Ilford. I was having to get to Euston. I was getting to Euston to Birmingham. Uh, it weren't. It wasn't the frills and the, 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 the all the the fanfare stuff that you get from a professional footballer, put it that way. Yeah, I bet it's quite a bizarre and, thing. Though. And I, I had a, you know, I couldn't wait for the season to finish. Uh, deadline day, I thought I was going. Peterborough put a bid in of, um, put a, no, tell a lie. Birmingham wanted 100 grand. Uh, Peterborough wanted to have me, but didn't want to pay anything. Uh, their excuses that they wanted to give me the money, not that hundred grand, but they wanted to, you know, they wanted to pay the wages for that. It's kind of them, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, it went on, and this is where Trevor was a little bit out of order. He gave me a free transfer at 4.30 uh, on deadline day. So you, how long would you have had to rearrange your next Half transfer? Hour. Deadline day shut at five o'clock. Wow. And Do you think that was an intentional move? I I, I think I, w- I think I was an afterthought. If I'm honest, yeah. I don't really, you know, you he he, he, he sorted it, out what he was doing, yeah, and then feeling towards anyone in uh, Trevor, especially because uh, he had other bits and pieces. He had a first team to run. He had big names to deal with, um, and I think I just wasn't really at the uppermost of his thoughts. Uh, if he could have got money for me, he would have done. I think the timing of it stank, but I don't think you'd probably even get, give that a second thought neither. So I just wanted out, uh, as I said, disappointed that I, I didn't do myself justice. Um, but over the course of you know a whole career, is it ever going to go right in 20 years for 100% of the time? Of course it's not. So what what was your next move from here then? What, what was the plan going forward? So uh, Peterborough has shown an interest. Uh, Barry... I was a little bit nervous because obviously, you know, he'd blanked me uh, and, you know, all right, it's all well and good saying that you, you know, you'd made a mistake and he'd, uh, you know, sort of rectify it. But I spoke to Barry and that's when he become honest and he, and he said that he had made a mistake and he said he wanted me to be uh, Peterborough's player coach, first team coach, uh, as well as play, but mainly play. Um, it was in League Two, Peterborough at the time, but they had assembled a really good group of players, and uh, I thought, yep, yeah, it's on my sort of road, if you like, to to coaching. Um, I was thirty-one, or was I? Yes, I was thirty-one, and um, it, it literally was one of them that I thought, right, okay, I, uh, um. I could have some of this. Um, and as I say, I, I've, I've always thought a lot of uh, Barry for doing what he did, being a man. Um, 
none of us do things right. And that's the first thing I ever say with my coach and my manager. You know, you try and do it to your best ability. Uh, and you, you've got a squad. Um, only 11 of them, are, of them are ever going to be happy. You can't play everyone all of the time. It's just down to a football's a game of opinions. Exactly. Based on what you're seeing, but, what you what you believe is right. Exactly. And as I say, you know, sort of like certain people uh, grow on you, you know, and I say that would probably be me rather than instantly look at people. And that's why, you know, you, you, you look at trials, you look at, you know, sort of, and, and football, everybody's got an opinion. Uh, they all think their opinion's the right opinion. and uh, But no, as I say, going back to Peterborough, going into it, knew, of, knew quite a few lads up there. A couple of lads that I'd been at Birmingham with. Andy Edwards was a local lad to me. So we're best of mates, or we were best of mates and still are uh, in that period of time and, and, and now. Um, but uh, it was it was it was a good time. I felt comfortable. Do you think this type point in your career you were ready for that coaching aspect, and that made it a little bit more sweeter for you to drop down and to to go to Peterborough because you can see a path where you can make that transition from player into coach. Yeah, and also you, you it's the small little matter of your body. Um, you, you know, I I was. Uh, not reckless, but I was sort of full-blooded. I'd go in for my challenges, you know, with not too much fear. Uh, I'd get myself injured on a semi-regular occurrence. Uh, I don't think I actually finished the whole season in my old career with little bits and pieces. Just by the way you, the way you Just play. Just the way I used to play. Yeah, putting you your know, body through the I'd have a, you know, wear broke, and tear. I broke my nose six times. I've had nearly 20 operations on my knee, my ankles. I've had bits and pieces, you know, it just dislocated my shoulder. So I'm always going to, but that was me. I was going to always do that. So I've got to Peterborough. I've got this other avenue of being a player coach. Um, I've jumped at it uh, for two reasons. Uh, It was a three-year contract that obviously took me to 33. Um, And, you know, whether you like it or not, it's still my job. And I'm still like wanting to pay a mortgage and, 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 uh, you know, to make sure that, you know, family's all settled. Uh, and, um, yeah, as I say, the coaching aspect of it and, and, and probably knowing that I didn't have much longer. You know, I, I, I'd done all right and, and even with non-league football, carried on to 37, 38, but I wasn't the player that I was at Leighton Orient and Plymouth running around for 90 minutes flying there. I had to sit. A little bit more, and 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 probably, you know, be more vocal. Talk, and yeah, less, talk, uh, yeah, talk my yeah. way through games as yeah. much as anything else, and and probably orchestrate things and do things at the same time. You know, and pick my times that I went forward and and got me goals. I mean, the last season of Peterborough, I still managed to get ten goals um, in our promotion year. So I must have got up forward enough times. But uh, in general, it was a it, it, it was a it was a more sedate uh, sort of uh, footballer uh, that I was, or, or p- performances that I was dishing out rather than the early years. As you get older, do you enjoy promotions that little bit more? So, for instance, you know you haven't maybe the longest time left in the game. The, the late and orient promotion, again, when it happens, you probably think this is going to happen every season. And But when you get older, do you, do you appreciate their moments? I think that's a really good point. Really good point, and 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 yes is the answer, you know. And I think you know you, you're. Um, you, I done it, eighty nine ninety uh, with um, with Leighton Orient and uh, 30, 24, 23 off the top of my head. So yeah, it was always gonna you know. All oh, right, we'll do that every year. That was good. You know, that was a good drink and that was a whatever. And then done it in my last, we, we actually got promoted in my last game for Peterborough at Wembley. Um, and obviously that was fulfilling an ambition on the start of the interview. I said, you know, me and my dad doing that. And so that was really satisfying. And, and, and yeah, it was probably, you know, if I had to single out one or two highlights, that was definitely up there. Yeah, I can imagine it's a great moment winning promotion at Wembley, national stadium for the country. Everyone buzzing about it. It's got to be, it's got to be up there, mate, isn't it? 
Yeah, it has. And I'll tell you what, one, one little downer that I did do was uh, that the, the Wembley stewards wanted us off as quick as possible because there was an England game the next day, which was... So you uh, didn't really get to no, do that lap of all anyone on. Wouldn't let any... Wouldn't, I mean, Andy I Edwards, they, they, they wanted to, to bring their kids on, wouldn't do it. So, uh, any Wem- you stewards Wembley are watching Stadium. this? Any of you stewards are watching this? That's yeah, bang out of order. I know. Of course it is. It's, it was, that was our lifetime's goal, you know. And uh, because England were playing uh, the, the next day, because our game was a Friday night, because the England game was on a Saturday, and it was like, right, no, we want you off. Must be proper like, anticlimactic. You're waiting to get your adulation and to celebrate what has been your lifetime's work, and then they're like, no, sorry, mate, come off the pitch, please. Well, I, I, I mean, you say you, you know, us, us footballers are volatile. I mean, like there was there was a few uh, a makers being thrown. <laughs> I bet there was. was. Oh no, there was. Yeah. As you say. You know that that is sort of quite irrelevant to stewards and all oh, right now I've got to do a job and everything like that. That's our lifetime's goal, and we've just fulfilled it. And they, they want to put the air in, a, in in the bubble straight I away. It, I see it both ways because the poor steward, look, he don't want to get you off the pitch, does he, lad? He he's watched the game, he knows you're celebrating, but someone's on his walkie-talkie or on his earpiece going, look. Get these off of the yeah. pit. He's then got to deal with it. Yeah. You lot are giving him haymakers and that. Oh, it must have been must have been painful from both sides, yeah. to be honest. No, but we were we, we were too much you know, in adulation and, and, and like sort of rejoicing, and you know we we went off to uh, the chairman's place up in Hyde Park. So we were uh, we didn't do, we didn't feel uh, too too aggravated for too long. No, yeah, I bet the thoughts of uh, getting kicked off the pitch were gone long and gone after a few beers and that. Definitely. <laughs> 